Hi again! Welcome to another Art with Kendra. Um, over the past few weeks I've been doing holiday cards and today is no exception. So I will be doing my adorable cartoon cat playing with a Christmas ball. So what I'm going to start with is the head. Now I'm drawing on a small surface here. So uh, I'm going to make my cat pretty small. Give it a nice small little body here. Oh boy. Here's some crying. I'll have to go pretty quick here. I'll just finish the drawing. There we go. And we have our Christmas ball. There it is. And the kitty cat is going to be looking at that Christmas ball. I'm like, what is this? And the Christmas ball is going to be looking back at the kitty with kind of a warped face, right? We're going to have stretched out ears. Just a little peek of the ear on the back. Okay. Oh, to know it's a Christmas ball, we need to add in our little top there. And maybe there's a little hanger that'll come down. We'll add that all in later. Um, the next thing we want to do is erase. So you want to erase. I'll just fast forward this. There we go. We don't need to watch me erase this whole thing. Erase the lines you don't need. Okay, time to add our watercolor. And I like to use my number 10 round brush. It's a large brush, as you can see, um, but it has a good tip on it. So it allows me to, um, to get some nice detail. Now I've been doing my cats gray and I quite like them gray, but maybe I'll make this one kind of an orangey color. So I'm gonna just mix a little bit of an orange color over here in my palette. And uh, I usually do wet on wet, but I'm gonna also try something different here. We're going to soften our colors. A bit of a different approach than some of my other paintings. Um, the reason I'm choosing to, to switch this up is that I'm using a paper uh, that's a little bit lighter in weight. So this page is not holding the water as well as some of my other paper. So this is only a 90 pound paper. I usually paint with, you know, 140 pound. That's my my usual for something like a card. And sometimes even, even uh, thicker papers than that. So now what I'm gonna do is pull, using water, I'm gonna pull that just to soften the edge because I don't want any hard edges. I do wanna give my cat a little highlight there though. There we go. So I've kind of softened that area. So we still have a little bit more of a concentrated color around the back here where there's shadow in the ear. There we go. I'm just adding a little bit more. That's a bit of wet on wet kind of there. But yeah, you can see it's just not blending like I'm used to. So I'm being a little bit more controlled, I guess. All right, so I do want this to dry before I do the um, the rest of it here. Maybe I can do a little bit of the ball though while I'm waiting for it to dry. So I'm gonna be using kind of a, like a really light purple here to give the illusion of pewter, but pewter is reflective. So not pewter, sorry, silver, silver. Um, silver is reflective. So this ball would be pretty reflective. So I'm just trying to create a little bit of a highlight and shadow but uh, I am going to be kind of adding the cat. Um, I'm going to soften this a bit with a clean brush. There we go. But yeah, a little bit of that shadow in there. There we go. Okay, so we'll leave that as that. And I guess I'll just blow dry it because this is still pretty wet. All right, so now it's time to add in the rest of the color on the cat. So I still have this beautiful orange that I mixed over here. And I'm going to just drop it in. So this ear is kind of tucked in behind. That's actually pretty watery. So I'm going to add way more paint here. We don't run out. When you mix a color, it's hard to remix the same color. All right. So now I'm going to add it into the body. Shadow along the bottom. Yeah, I'm kind of running out here. So I will have to do a bit of a remix. Let's try to match it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little dark maybe, but that's okay. All right, so shadow along the back. We'll have a little bit of a shadow there. I left some pencil line in that I shouldn't have. I can see that now. 
All right, a little bit of shadow here, a little bit of shadow here. So now I'm going to take a relatively clean brush. There's still a bit of paint on there. And I'm just going to soften that while it's wet. So I need to move fast. Pull in some water to that paint to soften those edges. Um, but I'm not pulling in enough water that it'll move across. So I'm still hoping to maintain that shadow, even though I'm kind of doing a soft blend. This one dried here, so I'm going to have to work a little harder to reactivate that paint. There we go. Ball's coming just in front of the tail. And there we go. Um, all right, let's blow dry that. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that same color into the ball. So ball, again, this ball is reflective. So it will be reflecting back my cat here. So I don't wanna go overboard, but I do wanna add that in. There we go. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of a harder edge there. There we go. And uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a reflection that can be kind of warped. All right, and I'm going to add a little bit in our tail, or not the tail, the ornament uh, top. So I like to do that gray again. So I'm just gonna go in here straight with the tip of my brush and kind of give it that little ribbed feeling that you get often on holiday ornaments. And uh, yeah, do that. And then I can draw in the little dangly thing later. I'm tempted to add just a bit of shadow here. So I'm just gonna make a little bit more of a shadow color and see if I can, whoops, that's okay. Darken just a bit of this ball here. There we go, see how that looks. It might be a little bit too aggressive here, but I do want it to be a little darker there. Um, so I think, uh, and you know, up here, I think I'm going to give it maybe a bit of a green, like maybe the tree is up here. So maybe I'll paint in a little, little hint of a tree just up in here as well. Yeah, there we go. Pull a little bit out in the highlight area. And uh, down here, I think we'd probably see a little bit of a reflection of this, but this is going to take off in the water a bit too. So I don't want to be too, there, too aggressive with it. All right, well, let's blow dry, dry that, see how it looks. Okay, we are ready to add in our pen. I'm gonna be using my Graphic One, which is a relatively thick felt tipped pen. I like to use Micron pens. They're, the, they're my preference for the felt tipped pens um, of the ones I've tried, which are quite a few. I've done quite a few <laughs> pens in my day. Um, my favorite is actually a nib dip pen, um, but they have a little bit less control. So I tend to prefer to use those. Now I have to make a decision here. I'm going to put the ball either in front or behind the cat. Hmm, I kind of created a tension point. I guess I'll have the cat's head in front. Yep, yep. Sorry. Uh, so I like to use the nib dip pens the best. Those are the ones that you dip in ink. Maybe I'll give my cat a little bit more of a smile here. There, a little happier. Don't love the placement of those eyes, so I'm gonna see if I can erase. You can't always erase. Yep, I can. So I'm just gonna re redo my eyes here. I'm gonna have one here. There we go, that's a little cuter. All right. Yeah, the nib dip pens um, they give you a nice organic feel for your lines, which I like. So it's a little bit less consistent in terms of your line weight. And when I'm doing cartoons, sometimes I just like to be a little bit more consistent with my line weight. So this is a very clean, simplified cartoon. Therefore, I'm going to use a pen that kind of gives me that, um, clean, simplified look. And the other pen, I prefer it, but it, again, it's a little bit more organic and I like it a lot for my more kind of spontaneous watercolors. Um, but something like this is a little bit more controlled. So yeah, that's why I'm choosing this pen. Here we go. Do my little wobble wobbles. And should we have this hanging down? Yep, we're going to, we're just gonna do it. Put it in, poof, and hook, there we go. 
and I have it come up a little bit there as well. There, <laughs> that looks nice, okay. I'm glad I did that. Sometimes drawing lines right through your artwork is a little bit uh, scary. Now, I actually forgot to add in our back feet, so I'm gonna take a risk here and I'm gonna add them in now. One of the things about uh, microns, the thick microns actually, is that they do bleed just a little bit. So you gotta be a little careful. I'm gonna go in here and add my cast shadow. Then I'm going to go back and add this and this with, with orange, because these are the back paws. I forgot about those. So I'm just gonna add a little, oops, look at that. I <laughs> accidentally added my shadow already. I had some Payne's gray on there apparently. Light's coming in this way, which is gonna give me a reflection coming out like this. All right, not a reflection, sorry, a shadow. I'm losing my words today. And I'm gonna add that shadow color just on the edge and let it fade out. And you can see the paper just isn't, uh, isn't working great. When I do my next card, I think I'll switch back to my, my thicker paper here. I enjoy trying different papers and I have to say this one is probably not my favorite, but it was inexpensive and there is something to be said for that. I do a lot of watercolor and if I'm always using my favorite, which is arches, um, I would be uh, definitely, my art, my art habit would be very expensive. All right, just adding a few little details now and I think we're good. There's our little watercolor kitty, so cute. I love it. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials, please subscribe. And if you would like to do classes, I teach online, so you can book privately through me, or you can look up my classes on OutSchool as well. I teach a variety of classes there. Have a wonderful uh, day, everyone. Enjoy painting. Bye.